Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power. And hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. I love doing my podcasts on the road, especially when I am experiencing something that I don't typically do. So the last time I went to a super old home, it was when I met Christine Watkins for the first time in person, and we went down into the middle of Illinois, and it was this amazing retreat house and it had the creaky floors like you're talking a hundred plus years old I don't really remember to be honest but it was beautiful and in the basement there was the blessed sacrament so you could go downstairs there were pews I'm sure there was mass held down there many times not when we were there but so I'm at this place Charles City Iowa Jazz City home of the first I think tractor factory I think there's close to seven, 8,000 people here, and I am loving it. I'm here for three days. Last night, we kicked off a three-day parish mission, and for those of you who don't know what that is, it's sort of a theme. So you come back, three nights, they're stuck with me, <laughs> but I think it went well. Um, looking forward to tonight and tomorrow. So I have all day in this incredible home, and I love it because I look at my house it's 20 years old. We built it through a, you know, just regular builder, nothing custom, you know, just one of those track home kind of things. And sure enough, I think that's old. And then I come into a beautiful, charming place like this, and I am doing my best. You have no idea how much I pace during my podcasts and how much I pace when I'm on my coaching calls. I don't sit when I'm on the phone or when I'm talking. But I do here because I don't want to have you be distracted by this. That's the floor. <laughs> so I'm going to go back into my little seat here. Okay. We're going to talk about a meme, my friends. Padre Pio. It's a quote. Society, oh darn it, I knew, I just, I just looked at it, and for some reason I have no memory. Okay, today's society does not pray. That is why it is falling apart. <laughs> Can we all just let that sink in really hard here? Today's society does not pray. That is why it is falling apart. If you're running around in this world questioning everything that is happening and you aren't praying, you are honestly part of the problem. And I'm sorry to say it just like that, but I say that to myself as well. We could pray a lot more. And what am I really talking about when I say pray? We are well aware that there is evil in the world and a heck of a lot more of it than I ever imagined. Because guess what? People have sold their souls for what the world promises them. We're in the middle of Lent right now. Forty days, Jesus was with 
Satan, who tempted him and said, all of this, all of these kingdoms can be yours if you bow down and worship me. Jesus denied Satan and said, no, I will not. But guess what? There are a lot of other people who have. And a lot of people who have and don't even know that they have brought evil spirits into their souls based on what they did in their life, myself included. I wasn't out there saying, all right, I'm going to worship Satan. But I did all of the kind of satanic things. All of the mortal sin kind of sins, right? So what did I do when I did those acts? I invited spirits that were not the Holy Spirit in. I chose to watch pornography. I chose to have an adulterous affair on my first marriage. Many, by the way. I chose to do drugs. I chose self-gratification. I chose birth control. I believed in abortion. I did not have an abortion, but I probably would have had I gotten pregnant at a young age. And by doing these things and inviting, even without knowing it, by wearing a mood ring or by having that lucky rabbit's foot clipped on my jeans when I was a kid, of course, things like the Ouija board, those are pretty blatant, but little silly games like light as a feather, stiff as a board, or looking in a mirror and saying bloody murder or bloody Mary or whatever it was. I mean, we're conjuring up spirits. We're inviting them in, even though we may not even realize it. But there are other people who have sold their souls. That is the most blaspheming sin. The only one that's not forgiven is when the Holy Spirit is denied, meaning you choose the evil and you deny the Holy Spirit. Jesus was tempted with this himself and he denied Satan. No way am I going to worship you. I don't need that rock to be bred. Keep going. I know the word of God. Man does not live on bread alone, but on the word of God. And so I come back to prayer and I come back to Padre Pio. And we need to be delivering spirits, not only just out of our lives and our families' lives, by praying prayers of protection, deliverance prayers, etc., but we need to be forceful about the evil in the world. And we need to be clear and direct about our prayers so that we are targeting evil out there. I've mentioned this before. If you've got someone that's in witchcraft or someone that's dabbling in the occult, they're pretty serious about their quote unquote rituals and their spells that they're casting everywhere. They pay certain attention to what the stars are saying, to the moon, to certain dates on the calendar. And they do horrific things. Yes. Sacrificing human beings and babies and children and harming them. And that is an offering to Satan. I'm sorry, but it exists. And I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because so many people don't believe it happens. And it's hidden. It's not going to be in front of our face, but I guarantee you that it is happening probably more than it did back in the day when the Aztecs, you know, this was when Our Lady of Guadalupe came down and converted millions They were sacrificing babies to that God. Come on now. 
It's not a thousand years ago. It's just hidden from us. But I have a feeling that there are a lot of people that are waking up to this. And Padre Pio, St. Padre Pio is right. We need to pray more. We need to pray for our family, our protection. If you are a mother or a father, you have authority over your children. Are you praying for them every day? Because I know my kids are out in the satanic world. They are no longer under my roof. But I better be praying prayers of protection, and I'm not that good at it. I do it. Ugh. I don't do it every day, and shame on me. And I don't call on Mary as much as I should. And praying for, again, specific things and for God to attack the evil. We have got to step up our prayer life. Because St. Paul said it, we are not fighting people. We are fighting powers and principalities. Why? Because they have chosen to bring evil spirits into their souls. And we have chosen to bring the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God into our souls. And yes, God wins. Awesome. But we need to pray and call on that spirit and call on the heavenly army around us. I made mention of the fact that if we could see what was going on in the spiritual world around us, we might just be cowering in the corner. There is a battle, a big battle going on, and it's time that we start pulling out our spiritual weapons. God wins, but we might be the 300, right? The 300 of the army. There's maybe not a lot of us, but that's even more of a reason why we need to step up our prayer game. So right now, let's pray specifically and poignantly. Sorry, there's a lot of traffic out there. Let's really if you can hear it. I don't know if you can. <laughs> I can hear it, so I'm assuming that you can. You may not. Sorry for that derailment there. But if we can pray this from our heart and continue to pray it every day throughout the day, we are truly calling on more of God, calling on heaven. Mary asks us to pray for those sinners And I know that there are some that have completely, completely disregarded God. And you know what? I know it says pray for your enemies, but they also, the word also says, God says, that there are, the, the unforgivable sin is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And that is when someone kicks out God's Spirit and invites evil into their soul. And in my opinion, that person's beyond me. I'll leave that one up to God. But I want to go and pray for all of those innocent people like I was who believed the lies that by doing the things that this world says will make you happy. And right now, look at what they're doing, right? Oh, well, you're anxious and you're worried and you're this and you're that. You must not be the right sex. If you're a dude, you need to be a girl. If you're a girl, you need to be a guy. And that'll solve it all. The evil is so blatant out there. And let's start fighting with the weapons of God. Right now, let's do it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, the Creator. You only allow what needs to be allowed for a reason. And you loved us before we were even in our mother's womb. And you created us for a purpose. 
and a meaning, and we are fearfully and wonderfully made in your eyes. So we ask you, Father, please give us the spiritual courage, the spiritual endurance to pray and call on the beauty of your holy angels, to call on the love of Mary and the power of Jesus Christ, who wins over every single evil spirit, Satan included. Please remind us of the spiritual battle that we are in and that we are here for such a time as this. We are seeing evil show itself into the light. The more of you, God, and your light and your love that we can bring to this world, the more that the world will defeat evil. We can see hatred everywhere. We can see division everywhere. We can see Satan's evil plans clearly in front of our face. But we know that with your love and your power, Jesus, we can cast out those evil spirits in our lives and in our family's life and bring your light, your love, your compassion to the world. Love defeats hate. One cannot argue with love. It doesn't work. So help us be prayer warriors and fighters, but lovers of ourselves and our neighbors so that we can love people to Jesus. We can love people and change the evil in their hearts through our God-loving heart. Help us to live the two greatest commandments that we know start with you, God. Help us pray more. Okay, you had to have heard that truck. Sorry. Lord, help us pray more. Help us call on your name. Jesus, remind us that you are always there and you and your precious blood defeat any evil in our lives. Help heal us. Help us be redeemed and transformed with your spirit of the Father and the Son together in us. Help us ignite the Holy Spirit within us so that we can shine God's light to the world. It's a really exciting time to be on this earth, God, and I thank you for having all of us together where we can be spiritual companions and lovers of you, but also arm in arm fight the evil through the weapons, the spiritual weapons that you've shared with us, but also with our loving heart so that people can see you in us, help us die to ourselves, to our selfish ways, to our insecurities, and give us that courage and that persistence and patience. As we see you working, we see you working, God. You are bringing truth out. The lies are being exposed. We need more perseverance. So we ask you, Lord, you've chosen us. We are yours. Help us be prayer warriors and help us love like nobody has ever loved before because this world needs it so much. St. Padre Pio, pray for us. Mary, pray for us. St. Michael, the Archangel, pray and defend us in this battle. 
Jesus, pour your precious blood on all of us and protect us today. In your name we pray, amen. In the name of the Father who created us, who loves us to existence. In the name of the Son, Jesus, who's the healer and the redeemer. And the name of the Holy Spirit, who is the transformer within us and the sanctifier. Let's contemplate the Holy Trinity. Let's reflect on the power of God that surrounds us in and out, up and down, and do our best to be the light that this dark world needs. Remember, prayer is a weapon, and we ought to be using it. And if you don't have the Father Ripperger Deliverance Prayers for the Laity, by all means, you can go online. I like to search Catholic prayers, Catholic deliverance prayers, Catholic prayers of protection. You can find things out there if you just do your searching and then print it out. Keep it with you. Pray it at least once a day, especially for your family, especially for the kids who aren't practicing, right? Okay. I've got a lot of time in this house. I won't take up too much more of yours, but I just want you to be joyful right now. While evil is out there and a lot of crazy things are happening, it's also shining the light on the truth and the lies. People are waking up left and right. The things that were called conspiracy theories are becoming conspiracy fact really fast. And I'm sorry if you don't appreciate me bringing the world into this podcast. I apologize. I'm going to try and do a, a, I'm trying to balance life, our spiritual life and the reality of life because they aren't mutually exclusive. They absolutely must merge together. We have got to live the gospel glorifying God in our lives on this earth now, in this world. Before, I was in a Catholic bubble before 2020. And then Christine and I started doing this research and we started looking up all this stuff. This goes back a couple of years for me. And I know that God gave me the eyes to see so that I can speak about it. I know God led me to these data points and these facts so that I can go there. And I remember in the beginning, I was afraid. Imagine that. I have all this detachment from the world speaking about the Catholic faith and speaking about Jesus in my life. And I have no problem sharing all of my wounds and all of that. But gosh, I don't want to be called like a conspiracy theorist. I, I don't I don't want to be called like an anti vaxxer. I I don't want to be labeled racist, transphobe, homophobe. I, you know? Hello. That's evil. I am one label. I am a Christian. I am a child of God. A Jesus loving child of God. <laughs> That's the only label. And I keep going back to the only audience that I live for, the audience of one. So in the beginning, and this goes back into the summer of 2020 when Christine and I were calling out all this stuff about DARPA and Gates and the NA. NIH and the NAIHAD or whatever the heck it's called, all these like ac acronyms and Fauci and all this stuff. And then follow the science, follow the silenced. 
then censoring and, and all this stuff. And we were finding that, oh my gosh, this article was out here all about vaccines and how it takes a minimum of 10 years. And then boom, Google takes the article down. And this was like in the very, very early stages. But I thought my lane that God wanted me to play in was about prayer and you deepening your relationship with God so that you can have your own mystical relationship with the Lord so that you know God's voice in your life. And I, I think I have fulfilled that and I'm continuing to fulfill that because honestly, if you don't know God's voice in your life right now, you don't know the truth because you need to know what God is leading you to. And you need to, you need to digest information with God because if you don't, then you're going to be ruled by feelings and feelings are going to make you fearful and scared. And you should never, ever be fearful or scared when God is talking to you. That's not the voice unless you're in mortal sin. We've been there before, right? When you're in mortal sin and you're battling mortal sin, the Lord will, will poke you and prick you. It won't be peaceful. Satan will make it feel good. Oh, do it. You can go to confession. It's okay. You need this stress relief. It's all right. You know, that type of stuff. But otherwise, it is the peace of God. And if you are not peaceful and you're not bringing God in, how in the world do you know if it's real or not, if it's truthful or not? Because we have got to live life with God. God isn't something that we do in the morning, and that's it. Now more than ever, are we to pray? Are we to call him into our life? To discern? And it may not be where you're reading something and, oh, okay, well, I don't really even know if this is true or not. Or you're feeling confused about it. I just heard Taylor Mar Dr. Taylor Marshall, you know, God is not the God of confusion. Satan is. So if you're out there wondering, well, geez, you know, a year and a half ago, before the elections, every news channel that I put on was calling Hunter Biden's laptop false. They were taking down information. They were censoring and cutting off people's channels that were sharing that laptop. It's Russian misinformation, disinformation. Russia got pulled into that. This is classic Russia. Russia, 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 Russia. I mean, hello, people. All right, I'm sorry. Now I'm getting riled up. Now it's out there. And there's some really bad stuff on it. Don't take my word for it. Go listen to Steve Bannon, his war room. Just search it on the internet. He had a guy on, and it was amazing what he was saying. It is all tied together. And the Ukraine is smack dab in the middle of it. The Biden crime family Clinton's, Obama, Ukraine is the hub and the pit of the deep state. So much corruption. Remember the four politicians, children who are on and running energy boards there? It's a money laundering, bio research, whatever you want to call it, lab, hell pit. Why do you think Ukraine, Ukraine? Or why do you think war, war? They want to blow the place up, get rid of all of the information, get rid of all the facts and the proof. Oh, it's going to get good, y'all. It really is. And I can't wait. That's why I say you keep praying. You keep praying for God to bring the truth out into the world. And you pray for yourself to be led by the truth. Because there are still people out in what we would call the truth movement, who are evil. Infiltration is a word 
that people need to put in the back of their minds and the front of their minds and the side of their minds. You have to discern people always, especially if they're on TV, on a YouTube channel, you know, anything having to do with information. You've got to sit and be like, okay, and get rid of your feelings for that person. Whether you like what that person says or not, or you like that person so much you want what they say to be true, that's what we've got to discern, right? We have to get ourselves out of this feeling and emotional roller coaster because that is satanic. If we see something that rocks our conscience a little bit, well, then we got to pray over it, right? Lord, is this, is this true? I mean, this seems pretty far-fetched. And I will share with you, boy, this is turning into 30 minutes. Sorry, everyone. I will let you know there were certain things that I believed and certain things that I questioned. And then two months, three months, you know what? I'm not sure I believe that anymore. So it's not like discernment is automatic, but you get better at it. You can sniff out the BS a lot faster <laughs> the more you call God in and the more that you take yourself away from the emotions because fear, 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 that's all they've been pumping into us for two years. Fear and lies, fear and lies. And now God is opening people's eyes to the truth. The lies are now on top of the lies, on top of the lies. The story can't even be straight anymore. It's so simple to me to see through it. And that is why I believe God is asking me to go there and forget about the labels. And okay, if you're not ready to hear it, that's okay. You can go turn me off. But if it's really rocking your conscience a little, then sit with it and pray on it. Let God show you, not Kendra. Because I am very, I mean, I talk to my mom about this. I have, I have people that I've, been on this journey with for a couple of years and we're all still trying to weed through this stuff weed through the lies weed through what is God really trying to do here without trying to predict God right I mean we can't so there's this level of truth trust that I that I have to say okay Lord you're going to lead me to the truth eventually. So I'm going to be okay with the fact that I don't know that this is true or not right at this very moment. So I'm going to let you sit with me for a little bit. I'm going to let this pour over me. I'm going to go maybe look at some other bits and pieces of information that kind of tie back to something. Okay. Be patient. Remember, it's a, <laughs> the three Ps. It's a process. We do not understand God. But I know, I know that he is trying to open people's eyes. We need to be patient because his timing is perfect, not ours. I do pray, Lord, please bring the truth to everyone. Like, bring Jesus back, you know? Like, <laughs> that's been one of my prayers, too. Oh, just bring him back, please. It's like, ah. But only if it's your will, Lord. I still pray those crazy out, out there prayers. But only if it's his will. So I do let my desires and things be heard from my heart, but I let them go to him and say, but you are God, you know, better than me. I'm just telling you, <laughs> I'm getting a little tired of this, <laughs> you know, like, can you help out a sister? 
And I, you know, this is how I talk to God. This is why it's a, it's a, an individual, personal relationship with Him. You should be talking with Him like you would talk to your best friend, or even more. Okay, my goodness. This is a problem. Now I'm all in this house by myself. I don't speak until seven o'clock tonight. I could, I could jam on this thing for a while, but be joyful that we are here to see this evil is being exposed like nobody's business. And when you look at the world right now and you read the word, you will see the word totally different. We are the slaves. We are the ones that have been held captive by all of this evil all around us through corporations, through politics, through Hollywood, through universities and schools. Look at what they're trying to do to our children through the schools. Look at what they tried to do with children and masks. Children need to see faces. God put our nose, our smiles, our eyes, our mouths, our voice, all on our face for a reason. It is hurting the children. And then you're going to take K through what, five, or maybe it was three, I'm not sure ages and that bill down in Florida was to prevent prevent parents from knowing this that they wouldn't have to talk to the parents about what they're talking to the kids about introducing gender confusion gender identity These kids don't need to be seeing this stuff. That is just destroying their innocence. And then you have corporations such as Disney. And you have all of these other, it's all tied together. And unfortunately, we've been so, I want to say brainwashed about it, that we haven't been paying attention. But there there are a lot of people that are waking up. And if you can see it and you know it's not right, we've got to speak about it. We have to go to that school board or protest or we have to support politicians that will actually stand up against those types of things. It all started with diversity and inclusion. And I was just speaking about this last night that I ended up getting this CIO role, but I gave myself the excuse, well, you didn't get it because you were the best candidate. You got it because you were a woman. And the other two candidates were two men, two white males, 10 years older than you. Maybe I was already in the, in the know, in the truth back then. Because it was, I was the only woman on the executive board. And maybe that's why I got the job. And when it should be, nothing to do with my skin color, nothing to do with my gender, nothing to do with my religious beliefs. If I'm the best for the job, I should get the job. This is all coming to light in a ridiculous way. And... Same thing with the Supreme Court justice. And now pedophilia is getting out there? I mean, come on, if you don't see God working here, you're just not paying any attention. So then ask him, Lord, give me eyes to see. Take off my scales, please. Please, I want to be on your side, in your army. I want to be one of the 300. Okay, now I'm going to (laughs) go. All right, everyone. Maybe I should walk more because, I don't know, sitting down, I just keep going and going. Okay, I love you all. 
I really hope you stay on this journey with me. Send me questions, send me emails, but we are in the world. We are living here on earth. And that means our job is to glorify God and truth. And we're supposed to pray. So let's, excuse me, let's ask God more into our hearts. And let's go fight that battle. All right, everyone. It's starting to get busy out there. Traffic, I'm on kind of a little highway thing here. So I will leave you be. Go find something more with God. It's an amazing time to be alive. Ah, oh, so grateful. Have a blessed and inspired day.